Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining Freight Waves today at our Net Zero Carbon Summit. I am here today with Angie Slaughter. She's actually the Vice President of Sustainability and Transportation Procurement for Anheuser-Busch. Uh, we are going to be discussing how procurement strategies can focus on environmental sustainability, uh, which Angie, you are the perfect person for us to have here today for that discussion. So I'm very excited that you're able to join us. Um, Angie, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, why environmental sustainability is important for you and, and really um, why you took on this role over at Anheuser-Busch? Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Grace, and thanks to Freight Waves for inviting us here today. Um, I would say, you know, I've been focused on sustainability for a very long time. Time. I've been with the company now 24 years. I, I started in engineering and really came up through our operations group working largely on conservation before uh, you know sustainability was really a formal position here. Um, came into procurement and it, it makes a lot of sense that in, in 2015, we organized our procurement department around sustainability. So we now own that sustainability strategy for um, the greater company. But it's also very integrated into a lot of the a lot of the divisions across the entire company. So for me personally, I've been focused on it a long time. Again, working on the utility side and water conservation and wastewater conservation first, but coming into procurement and broadening that scope and really working in all facets of our organization across sustainability. And now focused most most recently on transportation and how that fits to our 2025 sustainability goals. That's amazing. And, you know, I know that water is the, one of the main ingredients for beer, so it makes sense that you guys focus so much time on that. Uh, I uh, was diving into kind of how, how you go about making beer the, over the last couple of days, and I was like, well, that completely makes sense why um, you went from that position really to focusing on the procurement side of things. What hurdles uh, have you really overcome with creating a procurement strategy and uh, how did you find uh, ways around those those hurdles so far? Yeah, I'd say first and foremost, um, we set goals. We are, as a company, we are very focused on targets and, and KPIs. And so in 2018, we launched our 2025 sustainability goals really for the future. And those are focused in four main areas water stewardship, smart agriculture, renewables and carbon, and circular packaging. And really renewables and carbon is, is most important for our conversation here today, because here we're looking to purchase 100% of our electricity from renewable sources, but also reduce our greenhouse gas emissions across our entire supply chain, including transportation, by 25% by 2025. So a lot of work to do. Transportation is about 9% of our footprint overall. And that's why we're so focused on, on that piece. I love that. Uh, I actually helped with a couple of nonprofits, the same type of initiative, 25% by 25. So I love hearing that you guys are working on that within your company as well. Um, what type of strategies are you uh, currently implementing with your team? Specifically ones that companies that are smaller than an Anheuser-Busch uh, could start implementing today within their companies and in their industries as well? Yeah, I think a, a few things, several things. Um, first and foremost, in, in the transportation space, looking at the mode of transportation you're using. So for us, our, our footprint, we drive more than 300 million miles every year across all forms of transportation. So understanding um, where can you switch to more efficient forms of transportation between, um, between rail and, and over the road, for example. Um, the other thing I would say that is an immediate, um, immediate way that you can approach this is just looking at your patterns and looking for efficiencies, for example, in backhauls to reduce those emissions so that you're not um, susceptible to that. And then lastly, that takes a little bit more time and strategy is that entire alternative fuel strategy. How do we build it out um, for us between now we're already started, you know, we've already had several large um, partnership announcements, but from now to 2025, getting to a zero emission fleet of the future is, is really our focus today. 
I love that you touched on the partnerships. Uh, for any of our viewers that aren't up to date with those, could you describe the different partnerships that you guys have uh, announced recently? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to several. Um, our, first, I would say um, we've had a strong partnership with BYD in California for, for EV vehicles. Uh, we have 25 now in our fleet there in California and worked with both CARB and the Center for Transportation and, and the Environment there uh, to get those in place. That's in our, in our urban setting, more delivery to retail. So when we think about, again, our, our scope, we, we produce at our breweries, we deliver them to our wholesalers. Those are usually the longer over the road um, transportation um, um, lanes. And then we deliver from our wholesalers to retail, which are typically our more urban settings city setting deliveries. That's the piece where we're working um, in our tier two delivery to retail with BYD with electric vehicles. So successful partnership there. Um, we also uh, just last year and now have more than 180 RNG trucks in, in St. Louis and Houston through a partnership um, there. We've got Peterbilt trucks. We worked with Agility Fuel Systems and also U.S. Gain and American Natural Gas on, on the um, on the filling side, but there we've we've got a partnership in place now for 100% of our dedicated fleet, and these are the longer haul over the road trucks that we've completely converted to RNG, which has uh, about 70% lower emissions than conventional diesel. So some success stories there as well. And then we're looking to pilot. Really, this year and and next is very focused on pilots, and then beyond 2022, how do we scale? from 2022 to 2025 to, to get there. That's amazing. Yeah, I I love that you guys are being so proactive about these initiatives. My biggest fear sometimes, especially when it comes to carriers moving within California um, and the restrictions and almost more of the goals that they've set for their own state, um, my fear is that people aren't being proactive and, and aren't thinking ahead so that when these you know, guidelines come into place, they, they're going to have hiccups. Um, I know that you're working closely with your uh, transportation partners um, to set different milestones for them. Could you dive into some of those milestones and different um, key uh, data points that you're, you're hoping for them to hit on a more uh, individual level? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, we have performance metrics um, indeed, but we also track very closely our emissions per mile. So we have green logistics KPIs that we look at on a very regular basis. Um, we're also, we've been a, historically been a longtime partner with um, Smartway. So we also track re re emission reductions uh, through that platform with, with Smartway. But the other thing I, I would point to in a way that we've been working with our suppliers more recently um, we kicked off a, a, a supplier platform um, through Eclipse, what we're calling Eclipse at Anheuser-Busch, um, which is really bringing all of our suppliers across all of the different categories, including transportation, together to benchmark and innovate and really set goals to, to further reduce if they haven't already. So we've kicked this off now through Activate. We've got a, Activate as our, our platform for the goal setting and emission reduction Moving forward, we've got a third party managing this for us guidehouse, um, but we have a specific work stream now related to transportation where we're getting competitors together in the same room to talk about solutions and talk about um, innovation together, which is a little different than, than uh, normal, but we've seen a lot of great progress there already. That's Great. I I love hearing how these plans are just all falling in place for you already. And uh, I, I really am concerned on more of the small to medium sized businesses, how they are going to implement these strategies without having maybe the tech background that your company has. Um, if you could give a small and medium sized business, whether it's a beverage company or if it's you know some other type of industry, what are maybe small things that they could do? over the next year or so, or even just day to day that can help bring their uh, carbon emissions down as well? Yeah, I think absolutely first set goals. If you don't know where you're at today and you can't manage and monitor progress, um, you will never know. So set goals and understand your baseline and how you can, how you can measure improvement. 
Um, I would also say um, gain your leadership support if you don't have that already. You need at the highest level your entire um, company and, and leadership on board. We have that here at Anheuser Busch very clearly. It's expected and enabled by our leadership. But I would say if, if you don't have that already, you need to start those conversations. And then lastly, I would say look for partnerships because these are, you know, there are a lot of people looking to do the same thing. And when you pool those resources and those funds, you're able to go you know, further faster. And, and we very clearly understand that we can't do this alone. And that's why we're so focused on those external partnerships. It's perfect. Uh, working together to help the environment. That's the best way to do it at the end of the day. So you, you hit the nail on the head on that one. Um, I'm wondering, uh, when it came to building your team, uh, was that difficult for you? Is there any tips for bringing in people to help um, create these strategies? Was there anything that you found helpful or maybe a type of employee that um, people should look into in order to pull off some of these initiatives that maybe they're not used to? And I'm thinking about a lot of trucking companies who are run by, you know, maybe older leadership who this is just completely foreign to them. Would you say there's ways to go about building a team to get this done um, efficiently? Absolutely. Uh, I will also um, say that we took almost two years to develop our 2025 goals. So we, we announced in 2018, we started working on them in 2016. So it took us a great deal of time to come to, you know, come to you know, the focused areas where we knew we as a company could drive the most scale, the most change over time, um, and that were most important to, to us in the products that we make. I mean, beer's a very natural product, so it makes sense in the categories that we landed on and those four pillar goals. They're all tied back to our product, and they're all tied back to um, external goals in our value chain where we are influencing beyond our company walls. So understanding that first and foremost, I would also say cross-functional teams. It was very important for us to bring in a matrix of, of people from all facets of the organization to have those early conversations and understand and gain support. So ensure that your team is, is cross-functional and pull in as many different resources that you wouldn't normally work with um, into those conversations. That's amazing. So start yesterday is really the plan. For the <laughs> yes. Don't start tomorrow, start yesterday. I love that. Um, well, I guess the biggest thing I would like to end this off with is um, for you uh, personally, where do you hope to see other companies, whether it's beverage companies or, or different industries, where would you like to see companies kind of pushing um, more of these initiatives? Um, is there any, I guess, uh, any type of industry that you're working with or type of carriers that you're working with that you are hoping to see a little bit more out of? Or is there any areas that maybe people should be promoting this a little bit more? Yeah, I think when, when I think about the transportation space, the first thing that comes to mind that we need to work more collaboratively on is, is infrastructure. There is such a vast need for infrastructure. We're all trying to build the same thing um, today. And we know that we need that critical infrastructure in place to really be set up for um, the future. I think it's WEF. Um, the World Environment Federation estimates that $500 billion in infrastructure is needed between now and 2040 in this space. So there's an immense amount of work to be done. And if we work together with, with government and, and with state and you know, federal entities and with those transportation companies um, to build that infrastructure, we certainly will find efficiencies and be able to go faster. And you know, it's, it's good that you say that because I feel like this administration is really starting to implement those and at least have discussions with great companies that are, are focused on these areas. Uh, infrastructure 100% needs to be improved and 
uh, even down to just being able to have more sites for, for charging, right? So exactly. there's many layers to it. And I'm excited to see over the next couple of years um, what you do and what everyone else in the transportation industry focuses on as well. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Angie. Uh, your insights are, are, are amazing and uh, your team is just kicking it over there. And hopefully a year from now at our next summit, we can talk about uh, what else you guys have been working on. Absolutely. And I would also say if you if you want to learn anything else about what we're doing, you can certainly visit PurposeBeyondBrewing.com and find um, a whole host of stories around our environmental initiatives. Perfect. Yeah. Get that information out there so everyone else can learn from the behaviors that you've already implemented. I love it. Thank you so much, Angie. And uh, I hope everyone watching has a great rest of their day. Thank you.